Good afternoon. This is Pearl White for the Abolition News Network on Friday, September 2nd, 2016. With some breaking news regarding the history of slavery at Georgetown University, the current president, John J. DeJoya, just announced in a speech today that he is going to offer a formal apology for the sale of 272 slaves by the university in 1838 that raised $3.3 million in today's money for the college's overhead expenses. We have Mr. John DeJoya here with us to discuss this in detail. Welcome. Thank you. Mr. DeJoya, your decision to offer an advantage in admission to the descendants of all the slaves who labor benefited Georgetown University in 1838 is unprecedented, so say the historians. So can you tell us how you came to this decision? Well, Ms. White, it wasn't a quick or easy decision. I formed a committee last year to address the university's roots in slavery. Georgetown was founded and run by Jesuit priests in 1789. It relied on the Jesuit plantations in Maryland, the products of slave labor, and the sale of slaves to finance its operations when the college was struggling financially. The slaves were then uprooted and shipped to estates in Louisiana near Catholic churches where, the, where they could continue to pray while they were in slavery. Well, that sounds like those priests were trying to save face for violating the love thy neighbor as you love yourself, as in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. So now you want to write it in the 21st century? I said in the speech that we would create an institute for the study of slavery and its roots, and then erect a public memorial for the slaves whose labor benefited the institution. Well, that does seem to be a good start. Um, is there anything else to add to that? Yes, we plan to rename two buildings that originally paid tribute to the Reverend Thomas F. Maletti and the Reverend William McSherry, who organized the sale of slaves in 1838 by blowing up the cornerstones with their names on them. One of the buildings will be renamed Isaac Hall to commemorate the life of Isaac Hawkins, one of the slaves who was shipped to Louisiana in 1838. The other will be renamed Anne Marie Becraft Hall in honor of a 19th century educator who founded a school for black girls in Washington. Well, that is very good news. Um, so do you have anything to say in conclusion? In its 102 page report, the committee concluded that the university's dependence on slavery may have been deeper than originally believed. And additional research will be conducted by the new Institute for the Study of Slavery and its Legacies. And one more thing. We, we plan to provide descendants with the genealogical information in the university's archives. It is estimated that there are about 15,000 descendants of the original Georgetown slaves living today. Hmm. I've been listening to what you've been planning. Um, I didn't hear you say anything about offering scholarships to descendants. Uh, we're not going that far. We're providing admission preference, but not financial assistance. We may in the future, however. I have a suggestion. Uh, when these new universities were founded in the early days of our republic, some of them had ties to slavery or the slave trade. I think these universities should be identified. For example, Brown, Harvard, or University of Virginia. I think they should. Perhaps public relations will go broad enough to wake them up into doing what we're doing. You never know, it might have a snowball effect. Mr. DeJoya, I really think you've started something great here. To recognize the heritage and ties to slavery is a very good start in mending a lot of the deep wounds and suffering of those descendants' as ancestors. This is Pearl White for the Abolition News Network saying, after 178 years, the past rooms of the sold slaves in 1838 are finally receiving proper acknowledgments. And good afternoon.